Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to part 33 of our Confederate Let's Play of Ultimate General Civil War, trying to play through the entire Grand Campaign as the Confederacy. In our last video, we fought the first part of the Battle of Stones River, or Murfreesboro, depending on how you uh, name your battles. Civil War battles often had multiple names, uh, one for the South, one for the North. And in that video, we were able to successfully take several lodgements along the Union position at the Battle of Stones River, prompting them to withdraw north to their entrenched fortifications in and around the Nashville Pike, which is sort of the key transportation hub, the key roadway linking the Union Army back to Nashville and its base of supplies. Uh, the Union Army has fallen back on these positions, and our Confederate Army is advancing north to try and seize these positions and cut off the Union retreat. A large deal of the Union Army still remains further south, uh, not pulling back to these positions, and a large chunk of our army is there fixing them in place. So about half of our army is trying to advance on these positions near the Nashville Pike. The other half is trying to hold the Union troops in position uh, so that they don't all march north and unify uh, against us. Uh, this is part two, as I've already said. I hope you're all having a splendid conclusion to your 2017, and I appreciate, as always, the continued support uh, that you have given this channel. Uh, but without any further ado, why don't we go ahead and step out uh, and uh, allow my live stream commentary and audio to take over from here, and I'll meet you guys back up at the end. Kind of going around Hexamer's troops. But there's still a fair number of troops here that are a little bit exposed, could be vulnerable to attacks here. Some of them may be trying to go around the other flank. These brigades seem to be marching around our uh, inches flank, so we'll bring Wraith south to support. The challenge with this fight is we're so goddamn scattered. Keeping everybody in the fight is, is a bit of work. Marching some troops up and around us. To some extent, that's okay. To some extent, that's a problem. See here, a good chunk of the Federal Army is not in these fortifications. Now, there are troops in the fort. Their flank is exposed to them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to move these guys up. Let's go ahead and take out these batteries. We're just going to try and mass overwhelm a segment of the line. It's kind of... What do you call it? Um, Botsylvania? Let's see. The challenge is they've got multiple brigades all dug in. We've got these other brigades coming around that are going to have a chance to hit their rear, which is a little bit more vulnerable. See, these two brigades are probably going to get chewed up. Not accomplish much. I probably should have waited for the brigade coming across the river before launching my general assault here. As it would have given me a better odd to overwhelm them if I'm hitting them from front and rear. Front and flank. Well, front, Actually, no, front and rear. That would be accurate. And meanwhile, all of these troops down here cannot help to defend this roadway, and this is really their escape. So, the enemy loses this defensive position here. They're going to lose the battle because this is their this is their avenue of retreat, if you will. All right, so we push the one brigade back. We've made a, a lodgement here. We'll call it our picket's charge. This is our angle. And now that we're through the line, our troops can fire into the flank of these guys, because they're they're still dug in, but they're only protected from the front. Alright. Lee and Johnson get up there and rally the guys who are retreating. Certainly I'm, I'm, I'm living up to my nickname of the Butcher here. But we've got to keep this momentum up. We've got troops coming across now. Lotus, you go ahead and charge. I know you're the lead brigade, but... Looks like there's a, a lot further line of enemy troops over here, actually, so maybe it wasn't wise to have you charge. Because there's more troops dug in, apparently facing that direction. Got to hold for 11 more minutes, I think. 
And then we've got to take this objective as well. Some Federals in the 22nd Illinois coming in are attacking from behind. Meanwhile, a large, you can see blue troops are marching north, but these guys here in this wood line are doing their job and tying up a lot of Federal regiments that could be defending entrenchments, which are not able to. See here, driven the enemy back largely out of some of the uh, most of these works, but we've got to keep the pressure up in the south because they could easily come up and hit us in the rear over here. Going to swing it over here. We've got some more earthworks to deal with. Still, you're going to charge Betty Hood too. Just going to try and overwhelm these guys. Oh, cavalry can charge earthworks in this game. And see here, if got a whole line of enemies in uh, trenches over here as well. We are pushing up, pushing forward with this sort of center core. Well, trying to use Johnson and Lee to rally some of these troops. All right, we drove the 22nd Illinois back. I don't know if all of these entrenchments are guarded. I can't really see my skirmishers. Trying, I'm trying with all my heart to break this flank here. If I can dislodge this enemy unit, then I can roll up their whole line. But otherwise, I'm going to be stuck attacking the front of trenches. So you can see there's some substantial enemy troops. Why don't you form here? Harder flank. You come over here. All keep attacking that artillery. So there's still quite a few enemy troops between me and my objective. Move you guys up. But we have now broken through the defenses. We can roll this part of the lineup as well. All right. Meanwhile, I think these other new troops are really going to need to come in and, and kind of give us some fresh assistance, some fresh legs. It's artillery forward. When troops, are they still doing their job? Or Yankees? Well, at least they're still in position. Let's go ahead and pull some of these troops north, though. These two brigades north. Reinforce, if they even get there in time. We'll bring three. Rest can kind of hold the feds where they are. Keep pushing them back down here, inflicting some casualties, doing a little bit of damage. All right. This battle as the south is very challenging because there's a lot to manage over a large space. PG2 Beauregard is dead. The victor of Fort Sumter has been struck down along with Jesse Sully. Meanwhile, our melee cavalry is doing a good job in getting some of these Yanks to run. Keep up the pressure, guys. Keep up the pressure. Need to make it all the way over here. Kind of broken in on this flank, but we need to keep, keep pouring troops in here. Get in behind some of these works. I don't think... I think the troops that I have over here are already exhausted from breaching the line. And now some blue coats coming up here and what was or is like I wish I could put my troops into the earthworks that we just took that doesn't make sense that I can't but apparently I can't artillery stop here as all fire at these Yankees coming up from the south they're threatening my goods flank so now I'm gonna have to defend against reinforcing troops from the south and over here and finish off Hazen's aid. Why aren't you guys moving? Get your asses up. Everybody get over here. And if I can move you on the double, I will. At least some of you. I'm sitting in the back.
Hazen's being driven into the river there. Sully just got flanked and routed by Gross's brigade. You can see here there's a strong wall of enemy troops in good defensive terrain. But we can kind of get around that here. This wood line is a little bit of an avenue into the into the federal flank if we exploit it. Well, I'm trying to pour some of these troops through. Some of that artillery up here. Wagons too. So our cavalry is kind of riding north now. Okay. There you go, holding the line there. All right, there's some troops are low on supply. I don't know where all of our wagons are. All of our troops are trying to move north. Some of our other troops. Really just need to kind of keep advancing, but a good deal of these Yankee troops are just sitting in the south rather than moving north. All right. Broken through this wood line here. Driving them back. A whole bunch of Yankees routed into the open. Their entrenchments are all facing the wrong way. So that'll be good for us. We'll leave one brigade back here to guard the flank. The rest of these, I want to move them up. Barksdale's moving toward the objective here. We've got about an hour left. I think if we take these objectives, we win the battle here and we don't have to fight a second day. This is a bloodbath for sure. Certainly not a cheap victory if we manage it. We lost more than half our army? Not yet. Barksdale's good. here. Got another brigade over here. Quite a bit of unused artillery, mainly just to try and guard the flank. Actually, quite a bit of unused infantry, too. Move him north. Why don't you try and just walk or drive him out of his position here? After to advance. Another major general goes down. Wounded. Alright, I kind of feel like I'm getting schliefened in that my flanking maneuvers... Pulling up a little bit short. It's objective with the artillery over here. Try an oblique over toward the actual objective. Get a couple of units up this way. I've got a lot of guns that I have in the armory. They're not all the same quality. But uh, I certainly... I will have guns to replace my casualties. I may have to lower the quality of some of those guns. Barksdale's getting a little bit overextended over here. Alright. Officers could be a challenge, that's for sure. Get, get keep advancing, keep the pressure up kind of forgotten about those troops I had in the south, frankly. Right, these guys were just kind of holding their position just in case, but no reason to do that anymore. Alright, advance here. Barksdale's routing. Here's my officers. He, you go to the north. Johnson, you help stabilize these guys. Has arrived from the southern flank, and actually, so have these two brigades. So, we're gonna send them right in here, stiffening up our flank. We pulled some troops from it. We get up here, inspire these troops to take the objective before the time runs out. You guys go for the objective and run. You guys too. And pick it. You can go that way too. Morale's probably low. And these three brigades over here. 
lateral flank. Spears is die too. Alright. So let's see. This one's a lesson in futility. I hope not. Alright, so we pushed one of these units back out of their positions. So we can move in on Haskell toward the actual flag. What are you doing, Stockton? Just march up and get killed. There's no reason to give guys cold steel in this battle. Shoot your damn guns. Alright. Now over here, Lee, you are in range of these guys. Nice. Too closer. Double quicking into position. Barksdale, I want you going that way too. I don't know how many men we need to seize the objective here. We gotta think we're getting enough close to where they need to be. And all right, so we're flanking them. Oh my God, we're flanking them! All right, Staff, keep advancing, keep pushing, keep pushing. There we go, we got it. All right, Otis, deal with these guys coming in from behind. Hood as well. Barksdale, keep up the pressure. And you're going to come in as well. Now we got to hold it for 18 minutes. Okay. You think this is an example of how Civil War battles were really fought? I guess it probably depends on the battle and on the commander. Some battles had... I don't, I don't know if they're all quite as hectic as this one. Alright, so I think we've secured this objective for good. I don't think the Federals are going to counterattack us. I don't think they're going to have the manpower to do it. Again, we've got a lot of troops in the south here just kind of chilling. We'll advance them and try and kill some, kill some Yankees. Yankee army's all strung out, but their line of retreat is cut. To me, this feels a little bit like Chickamauga, his, like the way you read about it in history, where we split the Union line, part of their army in the in the south is kind of hung out, and then they've got like an army that's hanging on kind of the rock of Chickamauga, if you will, George Thomas, um, in the north, just hanging out there, inflicting huge casualties on massing Confederate attacks that just kind of go in piecemeal when they really shouldn't have. But I think we got this one. Not without cost, for sure. But we've got all of the objectives and we've lost fewer than 50% of our casualties. Interestingly enough, we've inflicted fewer casualties on them than they on us, which is not something I think I've ever done before in a battle. I almost always inflict more on them. I'm sure if we had a little bit more time, now that they're dis this disorganized, we could probably rectify that. But, um... Yeah, I'm pretty sure this will be one of my first ever fights where I lost more men than uh, than I killed. Thomas Jackson is wounded. No! Hopefully they don't have to amputate his arm. Victory! All right, so we lost, oh my God, 22,000 men. I didn't think it was that bad. Jeez. This is going to be a butcher's bill to replace. 22,000 men. They lost 20,000. I lost almost better than a third of my army. Now, actually about 20,000 or 10,000 of my troops didn't engage because we never got to the point of the battle where they came on the field. Um, What did we capture? Anything of note? 14 smoothbore or Napoleons, 33 sharps, 4,300 Harper's Ferries. We also rescued some Harper's Ferries. So right there, that's 8,000 new guns. Um, and some other weapons as well. So we got back over, by my rough math, about 15,000 guns. Lost about 22,000 men. And I think we get some of these guys back after this particular battle because I've got my medicine maxed out. So we'll see how many men we actually need to replace. All right. $210,000. We lost 20,000 men. We get 8,000 recruits to replace them. But hey, at least we get the 20 reputation, right? All right. So I think... I think we go, we start building up training. We also probably want to build up army organization. The next level gives us an additional division per corps. But actually, let's hold off on that right now because I literally have no, 
I'm not going to have enough manpower to replace all my casualties. So allowing me to build a bigger army at this point is kind of pointless. Uh, logistics gives me more ammunition. So let's actually go with that. We'll get that up to five. We'll put both of our things in there. You can see here we've got a lot of guns in our armories. So that'll be less of an issue than the manpower to replace all of these casualties. Oh my god. Uh, if we go into barracks... Uh, there's a lot of guys wounded too. Multiple major generals. We've got two division commanders in the first corps are down. That's it though, just two. Uh, a bunch of brigade commanders are down. And uh, that's, a, that's a victory here. Um, let's see here. What are, the, what are the next battles that we've got coming up? We've got, is this Chancellorsville? Chancellorsville is the next major battle. There's three minor battles before Chancellorsville. So hopefully we should be able to build our forces up a bit before we actually get to Chancellorsville. Um, yeah, so let's go back and rebuild our troops. Oh my god, this first division is shattered. I don't think I actually lost any brigades destroyed, though, which is interesting. Second course, third division didn't even fight. Um, damn cowards. Why don't we do this? Let's replace the casualties where they were lightest first. So we'll go with rookies. Got the guns. We'll just go with kind of rookies for all of these units, unless it's going to cause us to drop a star. We'll worry about leaders later. We'll just go with the less damaged units first. Frankly, the cheaper units too, because these are going to be the lesser experienced ones also. That burns us through the Lorenzes we had in stock. Some veterans here to keep it a two-star brigade. These guys up here, all rookies. But you still have to... The thing with horses is you have to actually... You can't get free cavalry replacements. You're always going to spend some money there. Yes, sir. Okay, that was just increasing the size of this battery because it only had 13 guns going into the last fight. Yes, sir. Let's see if we've got enough money, let alone replacements. We can always use some reputation as well to get a few more recruits if we need to. Or money, for that matter. Alright, so the third core, we need a brigadier. Give it a colonel. Jeez, I didn't realize how thin our ranks were in the officer corps. So we'll give a colonel. They're fine with a 2,000-man brigade. Uh, they don't get any penalties. The third core is replaced. All of its casualties are replaced. The second core should be easy as well because the third division didn't even engage. So we'll go ahead and uh, do that one next. They also didn't. They only lost one officer in the in the third corps. They all, looks like they only lost one officer in the second corps as well. It's the first corps that was really shattered, which makes sense because that was the corps attacking them in their fixed positions before they started to withdraw. Quite spent that much. Veterans here. You can see here we're chewing through our reinforcements, but. Making some pro. I mean, we're we're not getting hit too hard, I don't think. All right, I'm not gonna get many rookies out of this. This is gonna be almost entirely veterans. Thirty thousand's a bit of a hit. Let's give them a commander. We'll make it Colonel Fitzgerald. Ain't. Okay. Mixing and matching. All right. We do one gun? No, they've all got to be veterans if we want to keep it a two-star artillery unit, but I do. We'll go ahead and uh, pick their traits. More accurate times. Firearms, reloading time, accuracy. All right, so the second and the third cores are now fully rebuilt. We've got 3,000 replacements left, and we've got the first core, which has suffered about 10,000 casualties, about half our casualties alone were in this core. Um, we've also got four, gen five, six generals to replace here. 
Uh, this will be tricky. We have 85 reputation, though, so that's quite a bit. It gives us a huge morale boost. We can use 25 of that on 3,000 additional replacements, which will still have us fall short, but we'll be close to what we need. Uh, before I forget, also, let's go ahead and buy all of these Henry rifles and all of these Fayetteville rifles. Trying to build up a stockpile of some elite weapons so that I can have a full brigade of Henry armed infantry or Fayetteville armed infantry. So you can see we're making some progress on that score. Um, that's that's where we're at there. Artillery wise, uh, let's actually take care of our artillery first. So our howitzer brigade lost two guns. Got nine in the armory, so we can go ahead and replace them. All rookies. Napoleon battery also can... Well, actually, let's give them a major in command. Actually, I think you actually need to give them something more senior, so let's go with a colonel when you have a battery this large. Go ahead and replace that. They stay two stars. So our artillery in our first corps is now replaced. We also have a couple of major generals, which we probably want to promote here to, to division command because we do have some division command slots open um, with some injured officers. So who do I want commanding divisions? Hexamer has been a good brigade commander, but I like the idea of AP Hill in charge of a brigade or division. So we'll go ahead and move Tyler Doles into AP Hill's Texas Brigade. We'll go ahead and move uh, AP Hill into a divisional command, and Jeb Stewart is back from his injury, so he'll command the other division. Um, we've got three other div brigade commanders that all need command officers, and they're all going to be colonels, because uh, I don't want to use reputation on officers at this time. I would rather spend money that I do have uh, than spend reputation at this point. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and put... I don't know if I want to put a... Major. Lieutenant Colonel. Eh, there's a penalty here. But it's worth it, I think, having a Lieutenant Colonel in, in charge of that battery to free up that Brigadier General to command that Infantry Brigade. Um, do all of our divisions have two stars? Looks like they do. Uh, these guys need their new trait. And now it's time to assign the reinforcements. This core is not going to be fighting in our next battle, for what it's worth. Let's go here. We're going to use our uh, lesser, our, our lesser valuable cores that have less experience in our next fight. Okay. So the third division is fully rebuilt. And that'll be the only division that we're able to rebuild. We'll have two understrength divisions for the time being. Let's go. Can't even fill this whole unit out, can we? Oh, just barely. I are good at math. Um, and five additional reinforcements. <laughs> All right. So this is what we the most we can do without breaking the bank and spending a whole bunch of reputation to get 3,000 more troops, which won't even allow us to fill out. We'll fill out the rest of the second division. We won't be able to fill out the first division. Um, but that's that's the best we can do right now. We've got a lot of guns in inventory. I could see if there's any brigades that maybe we'd give... Actually, we could give Arnold's Brigade Henry's if we really wanted to, because they're less than 871 men. We could also give some guys Fayettevilles, but I don't plan to use this core until it's back to full strength. So I'm not going to do that. Let's go ahead and save. So there you have it. That was a victory. It was a bloody victory, but it was a victory nonetheless. Um, Army Org and Logistics are both at 5. Medicine, Economy, Politics are all out at 10. Training and Recon we haven't really started yet. Um, but my goal is to get, you know, continue increasing our traits to make us the perfect general, even if we kill a lot of our troops. Stones River, a victory, but a costly one at that. 22,000 casualties. That might be the bloodiest battle that I've fought so far. Uh, we lost 16,000 at Fredericksburg, but inflicted over 40,000 on the Federals. We only inflicted 20,000 on them there. Um, what's their army pool? They're up to 120,000 men, so it looks like they got about 60,000 replacements. Their army pool was at about 80,000. 
going into that last battle. They're now, they lost 20,000, so they were down to 60,000 troops that they could pull. They are now up to 124 to 129,000 troops. And this is the total manpower that the Union can use to fill their brigades out in these various battles. So, you know, if we were to fight Chancellorsville right away, there's no doubt that all of their brigades would be at full strength, probably bigger than 2,000 two thousand men. These small battles, though, will allow us to chip into this number, possibly, and get them to a more manageable figure. I don't think they replenish between these three battles and the major battles. So I think we, we could bleed them down a bit, maybe get them under 80,000, get them to around the 80,000 mark, potentially, depending on how many casualties we can inflict, uh, and, uh, and really hope, help turn the tide on them, all while hopefully not taking too many casualties on our own end, so we can replace our casualties here. For the time being, though, I'm not going to spend this money on the uh, replacement troops. Uh, we'll see how these next few battles go. I don't want to spend it and then, you know, not be able to replace our casualties effectively from these upcoming fights as well. Um, so we'll see where we're at. All right, then. Well, uh, we've won another victory. We have uh, advanced further along the Union campaign. We're now moving into the Chancellorsville campaign. That's in spite of taking over 20,000 casualties. One of the first battles, if not the first battle, where I've lost more men than the Union Army. Uh, so hopefully we'll have to improve upon that next time around. We've replenished a large portion of our army, although not all of it. Hopefully we can get everything up to strength before the next fight. But until the next fight, I appreciate you guys all for continuing to watch and support the channel. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and sign out here. So until next time, guys, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.